In this very short non-technical module, we're going to talk a little bit about what we mean by the API economy. So far, we've understood in a fair amount of detail that an API is basically an interface that a software exposes to other software. For example, our client-side code uses APIs to be able to talk to the web server code. And in our context, APIs are typically HTTP APIs that exchange data in JSON or XML. Now, why is an API such an interesting thing that's become such a buzzword over the last four or five years? This is because an API can expose extremely specific data or functionality in a way that another machine or another software can understand it. And this allows us to build applications that piece together various different APIs. And a very simple example would be using a weather api if you're building a travel web or mobile app right just using the weather api would add so much value to our mobile app we don't have to worry about building the weather app api's portion of the application we can just build out our entire travel related application and for the portions where we want to integrate and show users what the weather is like at a particular destination we just use the weather api in fact apis have become so powerful that over the last decade, we've seen several organizations and businesses whose entire business is just providing APIs and not even entire applications. For example, Algolia is a search API that developers use to integrate search in their applications. Wiki.ai is a natural language API that developers use to build chatbots. There are several email or SMS APIs that developers integrate with to send emails or SMSs to their users. For example, Spark Post, MailChimp, MSG91, Twilio. So applications that are built nowadays not only use in-house APIs that are built, but also use APIs that are provided by other businesses and organizations as a service. For existing organizations, APIs actually represent an amazing opportunity. If you looked at applications a few years ago, the entire IT system was composed of several software modules working together and the way to interact with data or information inside that system was only via UI interfaces that were fixed and these UI interfaces were designed by the people who built the IT software and users of that software were constrained to use the system only via those UI interfaces that were fixed. However, modern systems are now IT systems that provide a default UI, but also expose a lot of their functionalities as APIs. So that means that basic building blocks of a particular business or an organization can be exposed as an API and several different applications can be built that use these APIs to provide an amazing amount of flexibility to an organization and to even open up entirely new opportunities or entirely new ways of solving problems using the different building blocks that they already have. So a new kind of application design has emerged which I call API first design. So when you're thinking about building a web application, don't build the entire application in one shot. Try to break it up into building a backend first and building the front end. And when you build the backend, build it in a way that you build APIs and build a user experience or build a front end that has a user experience that uses those APIs. The good thing about this style of building is that the APIs that we build can be used by web apps or mobile apps or even IoT, um, Internet of Things kind of applications. However, API first design is a bad idea if we're building just a very simple static or portfolio website, in which case designing an API is overkill. So going forward in the next few modules, we'll be looking at some common buzzwords that are common when people talk about apps, APIs in the cloud and try to understand them using the concept that we've learned so far.